Newport 17. That's kind of cute. We're at the Fantasy of Flight. Moraine A1 mono wing in the back there. And a scout with no canvas on it to give you an idea of how the framework worked with it. That's a Nice little new port. Standard. We have so many aircraft to look at here. There is a Fokker triplane. Little kitty ride fault the tribe thing. Winnie May postal delivery aircraft. Some rather famous barnstorming aircraft. old poker triplane. Huge wingspan there. Get a better view of some of the ones that are hanging up here too. Looks like a Jenny two-seater with all the canvas off showing the construction. Thank you. 
was him. Here's an albatross. Oh, you guys haven't even gotten over to the next hangar, have you? No, this, I'm just, <laughs> wow. Get a big old huge airboat. There's so much eye candy here that it's hard to even focus on one thing. Early U.S. Army chopper. This looks like a early attempt at a flying car. For sure. Back to the Winnie May. Tri motors. Very sleek air racer there.
thick. You know that's an authentic army helicopter. It's got a drip pan underneath it. Yeah. <laughs> There's a PBY Catalina sitting out on the tarmac. Don't forget to look up on the mezzanine. I know. <laughs> look up on the mezzanine, yay. Now, isn't that what they what was called a... Uh, a German V2 buzz bomb. World War II terror weapon. The amazing thing is these aircraft are all supposedly in flying condition. That's a really exotic one. A Skorsky. S39, the spirit of Igor. Apparently a Russian military flying boat. There's a wild cat. Broader front end. The big blue airplanes out there on the end of the ramp is our PBY 5A Catalina. Now, this is a real workhorse of uh, aircraft in World War II. This thing did almost anything it could do with an airplane. Uh, Anti submarine warfare aircraft. This thing here was an air sea rescue airplane. Uh, was the eyes and ears of the fleet out in the Pacific when it was out there? They towed targets. They were transports, uh, flying hospital ships. Uh, you name it, they did it. That was a good reconnaissance aircraft as well. The wingtips are the floats that will support the wings when they land in the water. This thing's a flying boat, and it's an amphibian. 
You can actually take off of the runways and land in the lake, and them wingtips will support the wings. They are retractable. Right now they are in their retract or flying flight position. That thing is a very slow flyer though. It was so slow that they actually took the airspeed indicators off of that airplane and they replaced them with calendars for the crew. <laughs> they did. Check out this big building up there. See the building there with the barber pole at the end of it there? That's our restoration shop. And at 2.15 every day, they, they do a tour over there. They'll show you how they restore these old airplanes, bring them back to life so that Mr. Weeks can fly them here. And we keep things in here like alligators. Uh, if you're, if you're going to see an alligator, you'll probably see one on the back side of the pond here. we got a big one laying in here. I don't know where he's at, though. If you don't see him, that don't mean he's not there. That means he's out walking around there somewhere. So I don't know where the alligator went to today. He's around somewhere. Hang on, this is our turn of terror here. <laughs> We're gonna line this thing up here with this open doorway. We'll have you go in there and uh, we'll tell you about some engines that we've got here in Fantasy Flight so we don't uh, rush anything on here. You can't touch the airplanes, can't lean on them. Uh, but if you come on in here, we'll tell you all about what we've got in here. Uh-huh. We got a little uh, microphone set up. I don't even know if we're going to need the microphone set up. Yeah, for right now. Oh, sweet. Walk. Come on in here. Well, nice. Come on in here. That's nice. There's lots of aircraft that are being worked on. This is an actual working environment. This is a maintenance hangar. We are doing maintenance work on these airplanes. Uh, Waldo Wright's Flying Service parks their airplanes in here. And this is where they hangar the aircraft when they're not flying them. So the two aircraft in the very center, number nine right there is a Barnstormer's airplane. That's a, a real plane from the 1920s and 30s. That airplane was actually confiscated by the United States government during Prohibition times because they caught them coming across the Canadian border with passengers on board by the name of Jack Daniels and Jim Beam and <laughs> Walker. And that was a rum runner during Prohibition times in the, in the 20s. Uh, this one here is a Boeing Stearman. This is a Navy version of that airplane, the old uh, PT-17 Army trainer. Well, this is an N2S3 Navy training Stearman. And this is the airplane you get to fly. That's the ride airplane. You take a Barnstormer's Tour of Fantasy of Flight, a nice ride in an open cockpit. This airplane's a little bit different. They actually give you the controls, and they will teach you how to fly that airplane in 10 minutes. They give you a crash course. They do, but they, and they'll teach you how to fly that airplane. Yeah, this, this airplane one. here, that the gentleman says, that's nice. This is a TBM Avenger from World War II. This is a Navy plane, would have been on the aircraft carriers out in the Pacific. I didn't think there were many of these existing. There are not too many of these that exist anymore. They're very rare to find in flying condition. This one's in flying condition. It does need a paint job. We'll be painting it nice navy blue when they paint this airplane up like that. And we'll give it squadron markings on the aircraft. Uh, but George Bush Sr. was flying this thing in the Pacific. This is the airplane that he was shot down in. Not this one here, but one like this. And uh, Squadron 19 that flies out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, out into the Bermuda Triangle. They were flying TBM Avengers like that. Grumman airplanes made by General Motors Corporation. Check out the P-51 Mustang right behind the, the TBM, just to the left of the TBM is a North American P-51C model Mustang back there. It's a red tail. It's in the colors of the Tuskegee Airmen, which is kind of neat. That's a the personal markings of a gentleman by the name of Lee Archer. He was a Tuskegee <coughs> Ace. That's what his airplane looked like. Very rare aircraft here. There's only two of these airplanes that we know that are flying. This one and one other one out in California. Come on over this way here. That's okay. That's the kind of an airplane that the Flying Tigers were flying out in China before and during World War II. The Tuskegee Airmen also had P-40s before they had P-51s. This one's a trainer though. It's got dual cockpits and dual uh, controls on it. It's a P-40 that's actually built for two. Again, very rare airplane. Only two in existence that are flyable. 
The red airplane is very, very rare. Uh, that little red airplane is actually an auto gyro. That is the Pitcairn auto gyro. I think they call it a PA-18. And that's the only one in the world that is flyable. It's a complete restoration on that aircraft. That's absolutely beautiful. It's half helicopter and half airplane, or cross between the two. Just to the left, there's a, a yellow and black airplane. I know something about that one because those are the guys that beat me all the time in the 1930 air races. Uh, that is a GBZ back there. That's a Granville Brothers racing airplane. And at one time, the GBs back here were the, the fastest airplanes in the entire world. But they weren't as fast as what you're thinking. These would be 240, 250 miles an hour. That would be about it. But that's the guys that beat me in the national air races. My girlfriend, Ma Tate, she, she used to fly a GBZ just like that one back there. We're doing a complete overall on that aircraft. This is flyable. It is a replica because none of the GBs exist anymore. There are no more originals. Uh, but uh, Kermit's going to fly that airplane fairly soon, so we're doing a complete overall so he can fly it. North American B-25 Mitchell Bomber, I'm standing right in front of here. This here is the Apache Princess. Got some really racy nose art on the side of the airplane. And they put nose art on the side of the airplane to scare people. I don't know, you think that would scare anybody? You can, yeah. you can check it out. It might. I don't know. It scared me. Yeah, it would scare something. <laughs> it would scare me, too. Uh, Jimmy Doolittle was... Uh, got real famous for flying these things off of an aircraft carrier one day. They're not aircraft-based aircraft, but yeah, yeah, he stripped them all down and put them on an aircraft carrier and he bombed Japan. He made a surprise bombing raid on Japan. But normally these are uh, mid-range or short-range bombing aircraft. They've got a lot of guns. they got pocket guns on the side, all 50 calibers. They would be strafing aircraft on return bomb runs. They would bomb their targets and then they would strafe secondary targets on the way back. Uh, if you look over on the left here, you, way in the back, you see a little wooden airplane. You just barely see it. Yeah. 1909 <coughs> Curtis Pusher back there. That is a replica of Curtis Pusher. So that airplane's only two years old, but it is in museum piece condition. I mean, that is, that is an absolute beautiful airplane. It's an exact copy of a 1909 Curtis Pusher, and it is very flyable so Kermit can fly it. There is some relation with that airplane and the airplane in the wood shop that's being built for Kermit. Uh, they have almost identical wings or airfoils, and Kermit is using this as a trainer for the Benoit project that's being built over in the wood shop. So if you go on the wood shop tour, you'll find out a little more about that Curtis Pusher. Way on the left, we have a B-24 Liberator bomber that we have hidden behind all the other airplanes. Mm -hmm. it's hard to do, but we did it. We did a B-24 Liberator back there in the left corner. That one's not a restoration, it's like a national treasure. That airplane is like brand new. Uh, this airplane has uh, never been restored. It's an original aircraft in original condition. It's been flyable since 1944 when it was built up until the current year here. So it's like a national treasure. It's a, it's a real uh, time capsule. It flew in, the, in 1944 for the Army Air Corps, the BCI, the Burma China India Theater of War. Flew for the OSS in the Cold War. Flew for the Indian Air Force before Kermit acquired it. Has never had made any modifications to it since it's been built. The airplane is still a flying B-24. It's sitting back there. There's only three in the world flying. The other two are restored. This one here is original. Airplane here with the gray. Uh, airplane here with the with the, with the gray cowling on it and the uh, and a tan propeller is a Sopwith Snipe. That's a British Sopwith Snipe. It's a. Uh, actual reproduction airplane, so it's a little bit better than a replica aircraft. It is new, it's, it was built about a year ago, and it was a gift to Kermit when the gentleman who built that airplane has an original rotary engine inside. That's one of the engines that spits all the cash and oil out. That's a Bentley BR2. That's about 230 horsepower engine, but it's an exact replica, or exact reproduction, I should say, of a Sopwith Snipe. So it's a very, very rare airplane and flyable. They are still doing some assembly work to the airplane, so it's still in there. Fiesler Storch, the German airplane, is an observation aircraft. A lot of times we will fly this airplane for flight of the day. Uh, we may, in fact, fly it for flight of the day. We may also fly a Piper Cub today for flight of the day. We're not sure which one will fly yet. But this one there is a, a lot of dynamic flying involved with this. They will hover like helicopters, uh, so it's an excellent observation airplane. And then just I've seen the, that last time I was here, I saw the, that. Yeah, the other side of the, the Fiesler storage, we have a Grumman Duck. The 
It's a J2F drum induction in there. Again, a very rare airplane. You don't see those around too much. This one's very flyable. It's an amphibious airplane. You can take off just like the PBY on runways, land out in the lake. The last time Kermit did that, you know what he found out? That thing will actually pull five water skiers. Wow. He's been known to do that on occasion. Now, it's hard to see, but there is a rack full of engines right behind the duct. 